My fault. First, I want to say it's a pleasure. It was an honor to be here today and speak before you all. As we know, like prisons are graveyards of exclusion. So first, I want to thank Erica, Liz, Andrea, James, Mallory, and Jasmine just for facilitating this type of conversation. Life without the chance of parole is a hopeless sentence and an indefinite sanction of slavery to the finest degree. Slavery, a lot of people hear that word and they get mixed emotions about it because it has a really horrific history. For me, I got really intimate with the 13th Amendment and the, and the 14th Amendment over my years, but there's different modes of slavery. There's sex, tra there's sex trafficking, there's chattel slavery, and then you have incarceration. Slavery in the sense that you're property of the state. If they come in here and tell me I have to lay face down with my hands up, I'm going to have to do that. So as I started getting real intimate with the 13th Amendment, which states abolish slavery and involuntary servitude, except for slave as punishment for a crime, looking at except with the E-X-C-E-P-T and not the A-C-C-E-P-T, meaning that it excludes. So that means that I'm here until I either complete my sentence or if I don't have an outdate, I'm here indefinitely, meaning that under the 14th Amendment, which opens up by stating any person born in naturalized United States is an American citizen entitled to equal protection under the laws. So when we start talking about equal protection and citizenship, you got people risking their life down there in Texas right now just to get citizenship, American citizenship. But if I'm a citizen of Alaska, which doesn't hold a life without the chance pro sentence. They give indefinite numbers. I mean, they give a they give a, a, a bunch of numbers. Or if you are accused of murder in Massachusetts, who does have life without the chance parole, you're sanctioned to watch every single family member die one by one. Watching your mother get old and old until she dies. You getting old and decrepit, and then you eventually die, and then that's. That's your expiration date. Now, if you go to Texas, which has the death penalty, then you might get shot or electrocuted or whatever. The whole point of what I'm saying, there's no equity in how life without the chance of parole sentences are distributed. So in here, we're just asking for a sense of hope. We're not asking to open the floodgates out to a bunch of individuals who you don't know what they're going to do. We're asking to give individuals a shot at being a better person, being a shot at transitioning back into society. And that's what we ask and why we ask to end life without the chance of parole, because it's a sanction of slavery and a covenant with death. 